Martian. I want to be a legal alien, a permanent resident settler of Mars. I want to see this beautiful blue sunset in person. I'm actually exactly like you. I think about the same things. I wonder about what is life? Where is it coming from? How does it make sense? Where is it going, especially? So when I was four years old, my grandfather said, the universe is infinite. I had to step back and try to stretch my mind to fit it all in. So I started sampling knowledge from humanities, knowledge from sciences, knowledge from a variety of fields. And I noticed one thing. They actually speak the same language. They try to paint this multidimensional mystery of life. They try to give answers. Now, by the time I figured that mathematics and physics had the coolest of the answers, I already had my PhD in biomedical sciences. I was playing with viruses, I was making vaccines, and I was still trying to figure out the question of evolution of life. So, let's see what does it mean to be alive. You need three things, essentially, as far as I'm concerned. You need information, an information system con consisting of a code and a physical support, and you need a boundary for this information, and you need some way to keep this structure together and have a metabolism, have a way to replicate and exchange information with the environment. Living things are obviously at a different scale. They try different patterns. They have various degrees of complexity. And all things evolve. Evolution is essentially a, an interplay between diversity and new technology. That's all you need to know about evolution. How easy is that? Um, diversity means how many ways can you be a fish? How many ways can you shape a limb? New technology means innovate. Means when you put things together and all of a sudden you have a new feature that the parts did not have such as the letters of the alphabet. They only make sense and have a new function, that is a meaning, if you form words. This is not a pretty process. This takes a lot of trial and a lot of error. Error is essential for evolution. Without it, we probably wouldn't make it all the way here. And you have to remember, <laughs> if you are a perfectionist, we thank you if you make mistakes. This can lead sometimes to extinctions. We had plenty of those even before Homo sapiens actually walked the face of the earth. So, um, but one recurring theme that you need to remember is progress spreads. Prosperity is contagious. So contagious sometimes that it changes the face of the planet. Let's take an example. We have photosynthesis was a massive, massively successful technological change technological. And this caused oxygen to be produced to the level that we have today. We have today's atmosphere without which we wouldn't be alive. Sexual reproduction increased diversity of life forms so much that we covered the face of the earth with new life possibilities and options. Now still evolution was pretty slow. It took millions of years until this guy appeared on, on the planet. And with it, a new and pretty awesome piece of technology, human intelligence. We all have it. And this made us be creative, be interesting, be able to see things that weren't actually there. We created them. We even have the power to be unreasonable. And because just with any life form uh, on the planet, we use technology to be better at living, we exponentially accelerated the pace of emerging technologies. And if you look at what happened over the last two centuries, we've improved dramatically in 200 years. If you lived in 1800, chances are you were very poor. You had no idea if you're going to eat tomorrow. If you had two kids, chances were you, one of 
them was going to die. If, if you were poor, forget about education. Now these are unusual, these are not normal. These are cause for out, outrage. Life expectancy, we added decades to that in just 200 years. So if you start feeling entitled to break 100 and live a healthy life still, I would not call you unreasonable. I'd call you sensible looking at this information. So we continue to fight, we continue to fix the problems, even the problems that we ourselves generate. Remember when uh, we, went to Mar uh, we went to the moon? Well, as a matter of fact, it's a good thing that, that we did, although 100 years ago, this was a very unreasonable goal to have. If you said it out loud, you gained public ridicule. But we made it. We did go to the moon. Not because it was easy, but because it was there. And the, the technologies, there are over 2,000 technologies that you bump into your living room, into your everyday life, that are the direct cause of our quest for the moon. Like satellite communication, memory foam, uh, LASIK technology, LEDs, uh, freeze-dried food, you name it. So if, if, you, if you think that this is not a pursuit worth going for, try to think again. Go, go to Mars, people ask me, why would you want to go to Mars? There's so much that needs to be fixed here on Earth. And my answer is, that's exactly why I need to go to Mars. Because the side effects of the technologies will actually end up solving problems that we have here today. And my dream of going to Mars is actually pretty mellow. There are people out there who are working on what is called the Breakthrough Starshot Project, and this aims to build the technology to take us out of this solar system and search for other habitable planets in places that are light years away, and we don't currently have the technology. And initiatives like this are all over the globe right now. All are aimed to mitigate existential risk to life and to humanity. Stephen Hawking said last year that we have 600 years to figure out a way to become multiplanetary, to figure out how to save 3.8 billion years of life and of evolution. It's on us. Well, to me, I don't know about you, but to me 600 years does not sound like a whole lot. It's a mere blink of an eye in the grand scheme of evolution. This means that we need to harness our thought power. We need all brains on board. We can no longer afford to waste time with being angry, with, being, um, with feeling contempt, with feeling, with feeling put down by ourselves or by others through any way. So what if we just let go of all our savage remnants. What if we direct our own evolution and save life on this planet as, as the process, in the process? What can you do? Well, it's very simple, actually. You can allow your brain to absorb the amount of information that it can absorb. You have to trust it. It can. You, you can try to keep it healthy, keep your brain healthy by keeping your body active if you can. Try to treat every person you meet as a, as a potential for you to learn something precious, a revelation for you. Try to start imagining a future not a future that you fear, but a future that you desire for the generations to come. Try to imagine and accept the fact that they are probably going to have 
values that are completely different from yours, but that's okay, because remember, they will all abide by the same mathematics of the universe. They will abide by the same law of evolution. We're all bound by it. Try to, try to educate yourself in mental flexibility. When you become too convinced of something, maintain just a touch of doubt about it, just enough to protect you from a belief system collapse. And importantly, teach others how to be mentally flexible. Now, it is true, I may never get to see the Martian sunset. But, I tell you this, the human that will is out there, is alive today, and no, I do not believe that, is, that it is unreasonable. I believe that it is mandatory that I dedicate everything that I am to that human. I do hope you join me. Thank you.